nuts. Specifically, a tusk nut. This week on Learning Curve. Hi, I'm Spencer Thomas. Thanks for watching Learning Curve. Uh, if you're new to the channel, I hope you'll take a second and like, subscribe, share, all the stuff people do when they want you to, to YouTube it up. I would appreciate that. Thank you very much. So this winter apparently is the winter we deal with our fears. Uh, for me, uh, it's in guitar stuff. Now, if you watched the video last week, uh, you saw that I, I had a little bit of fret buzz that I had to deal with which means I had to do some polishing of some frets, some filing of frets, some leveling of frets, and that stuff scares the crap out of me. Uh, but it worked, you know, I'm getting better at it. it. I get better results every time I do it. I'm learning every time I do it. You know, the guitar I was working on was an inexpensive guitar. It's becoming like a really, I really love it now, so I don't want anything to happen to it. I'm invested in it, but, um, you know, it's not like, a Les Paul, you know, it's a $70 guitar that's now like kind of kick ass. So, uh, worth the effort. Uh, and, and, and doing the work was really rewarding. Um, this week I, I, so I built that Stumac last summer and, and I love it, but the nut, it's just not good. Uh, I did the, I did the work myself. It was the first time I'd filed a nut. I bought files specifically for the job. I did a lot of reading on it. I did a lot of looking into it. I spent a lot of time measuring and trying to get everything right. And it still sucked. Look, you could play the guitar. It just wasn't good. It wasn't comfortable, you know? It, it, the strings weren't the right heights in relation to each other and I couldn't get it right. So, uh, and, and I will say there is something to be said for the idea of having to fight your guitar a little bit. You know, Slash has talked about that with Les Pauls, that he likes that it's hard to get to the higher notes, and somehow that struggle, you feel like, he feels it makes him play better. And Jack White used to, if you, if you ever saw it, Might Get Loud, he talks about how he's got to pick a fight with his guitar and he wants to win it. You don't need an expensive guitar, you need a, you need to make a cheap guitar do what you want it to do. Now he later bought a, an EVH and, said, God, this thing's amazing. I don't know what I was doing. Uh, I don't know what I was thinking. I should have been playing this easy to play, delightful uh, instrument the entire time, but whatever. Different people go through different phases. Anyway, I'm ready to move on to the, to the EVH phase with this guitar. So I bought a Tusk Nut. Um, now I bought this nut actually when I bought the guitar. I was initially going to install it right out of the chute because I just changed the nut on a Harley Benton that I had bought. They put on an inexpensive plastic nut that I broke uh, and I had to replace. And that was kind of scary, but it worked. It worked just fine. I put a tusk nut on it and it, it was excellent. It was very easy. Having said that, I decided initially that I would rather go through the process of trying to learn how to file the nut for my own experience, you know, that's how you learn stuff is by doing it. At least that's how I learn stuff. So I tried filing it and I've been playing with it like that for, I don't know, six, eight months now. And it's just, um, I have the new nut. It's time for the new nut. I initially bought this particular nut because they say it fits Fender style guitars, uh, strats and tellies. Uh, and this isn't a Fender. It's a, it's a kit, but it's a, it's a telly style neck. Now, the, the, the video for this says that you can use it on flat and curved slots, which means when you take the nut out inside of the, of the neck, there's either going to be a curve to it that will go along with the, the radius of your neck or it will just be flat. The video I watched about this nut says it will work with flat or curved nut slots, so either way I should be okay. Before I installed it, I just, I thought the best thing to do to make sure I was making the right choice was to measure everything. Measure the spaces in between the strings. Measure the edge of the slot to the string space. Measure the, measure the depth of the nut. And everything came out fine except this nut is not quite as deep as the other nut. However, the other nut was too deep. 
I had to file the slots down a lot. I had to file a lot off the top. So I don't know if that's a valid reason not to do this. Uh, and I want to do it and see what happens, which is also not necessarily a valid reason to do something. It felt like it was going to work out. Uh, it still causes me a lot of anxiety when I do stuff like this, but I decided to move forward. Let's see what happened. The nut I bought is a Black Tusk PT5000-00. It's made by a company called Graftech. It is supposed to stay lubricated forever. Uh, it's made out of mystery material. Uh, it's tusk, so it's supposed to be bone. It's like a it's like a hybrid some kind of synthetic bone that they're using. Uh, from what I understand, they harvest it from synthetic rhinos that, to be honest, have better lives on the Graftech farms than they would if they were out in the wild. I'm kidding. It's, it's some kind of magical plastic that they use. Uh, and I've been happy with it in the past. Now, I thought you would want to take the strings off to do this, but everything I watched said leave the strings on, and they say that for a very, very good reason. Um, and by the way, it turns out it's it's good news that I did a kind of a sloppy job when I put these strings on. There's way too much extra string on the tuning pegs, but that's going to work to my advantage because now I can loosen the strings up really easily and just pull them, you know, to each side of the guitar. I'm kind of using my little support neck there to, to, to keep them out of the way. And you're going to want to keep them on there for later, for when you, when you glue the, the nut in. Um, so once you've got the strings off, what you want to do is take an X-Acto knife and you're kind of going around the edges trying to cut loose any glue. This procedure is called scoring. And the reason you're doing it is so that when you tap the nut out, the glue doesn't take any wood with it. Ideally, hopefully, in a perfect world. And now it's time to do the part that I don't want to do. Um, there's a couple of ways to do this. One video suggested you use a chunk of wood and a hammer. And I tried that and I did not get results with it. I'm not a fan of the block of wood method. I'm going to go with what's worked in the past. I am going to use my handy dandy rubber mallet. Tamp. Ta da! So that's what it looks like inside the nut. Not too much to clean out there. I'm going to try and smooth everything out a little bit. I am now very concerned though because one of these is flat and one of these is not. Um, however, it's got that support beam in there, um, and I believe I saw somewhere that it will work in both cases, but I'm going to uh, find out. And if it won't work, I will get a new one. So 150 grit sandpaper. Gonna kind of go in here and clean out any residue. And now we uh, we see how this thing's gonna fit. I'm going to put it in and tune it up before I glue it in to make sure I haven't made a horrible horrible mistake.
Okay, that's a problem. So now that we've got it in, it actually, like you can feel the difference right out of the chute. It, that, that old nut, I did not do a very good job of getting the string heights correct. And now that they are correct, it's a major difference. But I'm getting a lot of buzz on my low E. So the first thing I'm going to do is try and put a little more bow in it with the truss rod and see if that will change the angle that the nut is going over that, that first fret enough that I don't get any more buzz. And it's just, I don't want to change it anymore because then it's going to start to have repercussions down the neck and things like that. So um, at that point, honestly, I got a little panicky. I was like, oh no, maybe I've, I've made a horrible, horrible mistake. I saw a video uh, last time I did this and the guy had the same problem. So he just used a shim. Uh, I believe he used a piece of a, uh, like a corner of a matchbook. I'm going to take my X-Acto knife, cut out a little square from the packaging for the nut and then I'm just going to put it under the low E and see what that does. All right, so there I just put a little piece of paper in there. And it worked great. That's perfect. That's exactly what I was looking for. So now I'm going to glue that shim in place. Okay, so I made this shim out of a little piece of paper. And the first thing I'm going to do is glue that in place and let it dry. I'll put a little bit of glue here. And I'm just going to let that dry for a minute. And then I'm going to do the other scary thing. I'm going to glue the nut in place. I'm going to try and get it as perfectly centered as humanly possible. I'm going to put the strings on it. I'm going to tighten them up, maybe not necessarily to pitch, but tight enough that they're going to hold that nut in place for about an hour, an hour and a half until the glue is dry. Now I'm going to plug it in and uh, see what we got.
say, man, it feels good. It sounds good. Uh, now that it works, I want to do one last thing. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, uh, it fits, it plays great, it feels great. But as you can see, I got just a little bit of overhang on each side. So I'm going to take a file uh, and just um, kind of smooth that out. And then I think I'm good to go. And just looking at it from here, I can see there's a lot. There's a lot to take off. I'm, I'm trying to get this flush with the neck. And I'm checking a lot. Obviously, you don't want to go too far on this. Okay, and that's how it looks after. Wow, it makes a huge difference. And I, you know, they say it makes a difference in the tone. And I was a little skeptical of that, to be honest with you. But I do feel like it sounds a little brighter when you play it. When it's not even plugged in, you can hear a difference. And, you know, I'm replacing a pretty screwed up neck. So to be honest with you, it's a huge relief. If you do this, you might not get the massive difference that I'm experiencing. But this feels great. It's a big difference. Uh, like I said before, when I put those strings on initially, they were kind of loose. I, I excuse me, I, I, I left a lot of extra string on it and I've been loosening them and, and, and retuning them up to pitch multiple times over the last 24 hours. So it is hard for me to say for sure that this has helped with tuning stability, but I think in about a week, I'll be able to give you a pretty solid yes or no on that. Um, but I've been playing it for the last day or so, and you can feel the difference. You can hear the difference. Um, it is staying in tune just fine. Uh, the, the G is, is being a G string, so that's not too surprising. Um, but that wasn't so bad. It was worth it. And, and the guitar is so much better now. If you're going to do this, I would, I would have set your intonation before. I would have, um, you know, have a working understanding of how a truss rod works. I would have a working understanding of how your saddles work. I would um, not be afraid to use a file. I would not be afraid to to tamp something, you know, to, to take a hammer and, and whack a part of your guitar off. Uh, if you're comfortable with that, or if you're willing to try, I think you can pull this off no problem. I don't know how expensive this is uh, to have someone else do it for you. That is always an option, but I gotta say, Having done it myself was really rewarding, and I'm very happy with the results. So, I hope you got something out of this video. My name's Spencer Thomas. If you like Learning Curve, please subscribe to it. Please like, please share. Um, I hope you're being good to each other. I hope you're having a good day. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next week.